I'm, I'm here. I just had to turn my car off because I couldn't. <coughs> I'm sorry. About what? For choking on the phone, <clears throat> I had to cough up some phlegm. That's alright. Feel better? No. No, I don't. I don't ever get to see my loved ones, Miss Peaches. I, I don't. I can't turn this off, Miss Peaches. I can't miss you guys anymore. I fucking can't. I just needed the people who I was trying to get help from to come forward and tell them I was trying. It's not like nobody came forward. People have tried. And not only that, like, you publicly slandered me. I am not happy about that. I'm not your fucking enemy. I can't go down there and make them take a report, Sean. Any more than you can. I don't appreciate the way you've treated me over all of this. And I don't know if you've noticed, but you're not in jail for fucking murder. Even though they've already tried to string you fucking up. You make me feel worthless as a fucking friend. You make me feel like there was nothing that I fucking did for you. And I'm not happy about that, Sean. I hurt the fuck out of my feelings. Because, yeah, there's a lot that I fucking did for you. And instead of acknowledging that and throwing that into your fucking rat and rave, you're just going to sit there and fuck you? Okay, well, fuck me then, right? So there goes, like, all of the help that I could have possibly given you. I agreed to help you, and I agreed to kill you. And I'd be happy to do either one. And it's not like I could just write a fucking report and then waltz in there and then give it to them. Because they're not going to fucking take it, Sean. Doesn't matter how fucking old it is. Doesn't matter how fucking new it is. People have already tried. They've gone in. They've filled out fucking their bullshit. Just because they didn't take it doesn't mean your friends are shit, Sean. And it's hurtful for the people that have invested a lot of time and fucking money to make sure that you're not dead in fucking jail. Because you could have been in jail for fucking life over a murder you didn't fucking commit. And you still wouldn't have it on this damn court. But fuck me, right? I'd rather spend life in prison than this, ma'am. You'd rather spend life in prison? Between spending life in prison and being stuck out here, yes, ma'am. I can't see you either way. Well, come back to Colorado and go see your fucking loved ones. Because if you'd rather go to jail than them finding you and picking you up is definitely in the realm of possibility. But I can't talk right now because i got to go and do shit. I'm sorry, Sean. I wish I was a better friend, and I wish there was more that I could do for you. You could listen. I can, but not right now. I need to be driving, and I can't be on the phone. All right, well, don't be driving and fucking calling me. I'm sorry for calling you while you're driving. It, fuck. I do okay, everything wrong. I fuck everything up, God damn it. You're right, I did slander you. And you know what? At this point, I'm over it. I gotta go. I love you. I love you too, Miss Beaches.
There's a big difference between going to jail and going to prison for life. I don't want to go to jail. I want to go to prison for life. I let Natalie know when I had the Michelle Brannick profile. I told her if she really thought I would fucking rape her to take me to court, fucking charge me with rape, or fucking call off the dogs. She wanted to pretend it wasn't happening. Now, why is Miss Peaches mad at me? There's 600-something videos there. 800-something videos there. And most of them I do nothing but sing her praises. That's the thing, is that I need my life to be over. I, I'll rip anybody's ass, I don't fucking care. I'm tired of... Seeing my black friends get out of jail in Boulder County. I'm tired of them being beaten up by cops. I'm tired of the cops getting away with it. I'm tired of the predators getting away with it. Meanwhile, the Boulder County government's doing a lot of fucked up shit. Like trafficking children. Taking children from poor families and selling them to rich families. Is Miss Peaches right to be mad at me? Well, fuck yes she is. I did fucking slander her name. We should have gone in together. So, uh, what's the difference between? Lying to somebody and uh, being in a shitty situation. I'll explain it like this. Andrew Witcher couldn't help me because he couldn't stay off the meth. Most of the people that I dealt with were addicted to drugs of some sort be it alcohol, heroin, methamphetamines, three things I don't fuck with. I don't fuck with cocaine either. I'll tell you something about Miss Peaches. She don't fuck around with that shit. I'm gonna tell you something about Raja. He don't fuck around with that shit. I need my life to be over. Like Miss Peaches said, can't make the police do their jobs. Can't make the police take a report. The problem is I didn't need to just make a report. I needed to make hundreds of them. The 
See, in 2017, I needed to make dozens of reports. By, uh... The first day of 2018... I needed to make at least 100. That was just... From three days of... Four days of harassment threats. The assaults, when I got back to Boulder, didn't start immediately. That's because uh, Todd, the drug dealer who was abusive to his girlfriend, he took me in. But I was afraid of him beating on his girlfriend. I wasn't afraid of him beating on me. I mean, I was aware that he could go off on any time at anybody, and I could be it. But it's not the violence that I'm afraid of. It's the fact that I'm not allowed to defend myself. If I defend myself, I'm the one who gets in trouble. So I have to just take it. You guys want to accuse me of blaming you? I will blame you. That's plain and simple. You accused me of stalking you. Well, I will harass you just enough for you to get what the fuck you want. To pretend like you're the victim. After that, I'm done with you. Lexi Woods, she's the one that I bought, or that Joanna Taylor, I should say, bought the uh, tattoo equipment from in Virginia. You know, these stories that I told, they're true stories, and these people are all witnesses to those stories. Out of everybody that I've dealt with, Peaches is the only one who has a right to be pissed off at me. Mandy Hughes? Maybe. It depends on how you look at it. That's a situational thing. In my personal opinion, Mandy Hughes is fucking wonderful. The problem is, just like all the other people that said they would go in with me to take a report, or to make a report, she never did. You know who did, though? Molly Smith in Chapel, Nebraska. And, uh, Officer Hahn went and asked Molly what she knew about my situation, and she said nothing, really. And that was as far as his investigation went. She didn't have time to take a look at the stuff with me. I mean, I had to bounce around from one court date to another, to another, to another. Every one of them getting abused. Every one of them, these people refusing to take my police report. I get that the anger is directed at me, and I think it's directed at me rightly so. Miss Peaches and Roger are the only people who can claim that they put any uh, real time in. Now, Blaine Macrelius, he's the uh, one who's been threatening my life and harassing me so that Ken and Leah can keep their hands clean. And Blaine sent her 
uh, link to the video where I'm pretty fucking pissed off at Miss Peaches. And I am pissed off at Miss Peaches. You know, I've I've gone in with people that were homeless to make police reports. And as a homeless person, it didn't do any goddamn good. But when I had a place, or seemed like I had a place, then the cops treated me differently. There were some travelers, Laura Nelson can verify this story, Ben Beardsley can verify part of it, Ben gave me two boxes of MREs, that's meal ready to eat, it's military rations. So a vehicle, a pickup truck pulled over and there was a lot of people in it. They looked hungry and they looked thirsty. So I gave them one of the boxes of MREs that I got from Ben Beardsley. And while we were eating, or while they were eating, Roy Wilmoth pulled up down the street and was staring at them and me. And that's when Officer Jared Hahn pulled up. Now, the officer that I spoke with prior that was a large officer who had told me, I want to remember the exact words that he told me, but... Basically, that he had real police work to do. And I, I'd like to say that I know for 100% fact that it was Officer Hahn, but I can't. I just know it was a large officer who did that. The police refused to take a report no matter what. Some of it was due to other people's ineptitude. Some of it was because of my technical, physical, and mental abilities currently. So, uh, the mean videos for... for Miss Peaches. I'm going to make them private. I'm not going to take them down because it's evidence. I save evidence of my wrongdoing too. Alicia doesn't care. She has no soul. She has no conscience. When I told Natalie if she wanted to accuse me of rape or molestation, I would plead guilty. It's not because I did those things. It's because I needed her to understand that this is hell. The way people were treating me was hell. Natalie was the last straw for a fucking reason. I was trying hard to hold on to my fucking sanity. I just needed one good friend in real life. I went back to Boulder. It changed a lot, you know. A lot of my loved ones are there. And I don't get to see them. And they got... Issues of their own, like they don't get to get on Facebook like Karamia and Layla Johnson and just play on it all day. I'm lucky I get to have a telephone and I get to have a vehicle over my head. And, and that's supposed to be lucky. But it's not what I need. It's what I needed 10 years ago. A 
vehicle and a telephone and I'd have been fine. The problem is I never had decent luck with vehicles because I always buy them when they're on their last leg. So... Natalie died, Tiny died, Onyx died, Ryan died, Janine died, Anna died. Why can't I? So I noticed Mariah, she's sick now, she's got liver problems. I never got to meet her in real life. I know that seems stupid. Something you shouldn't obsess about or whatever. I want to give her a hug and tell her thank you. I want to do the same for Molly. When you try to turn in a police officer, they do whatever the fuck they want. I'm up all night, too scared to go to sleep. I dream about Natalie dying. I dream about being trapped. I dream about the Boulder Police Department strapping me to that goddamn chair. They literally did everything in their power to prevent me from making a report. Mandy Hughes, maybe she's got a valid excuse to be angry, maybe she don't. So did I slander Miss Peach's name on purpose? You damn right I did. I didn't mean to cut for it to come out the way that it did, but brain and mouth filter, you know. I might be thinking three or four sentences at the same time and you might get half of one and half the other when I'm Fucking stressed out. Miss Peaches didn't understand that I, I couldn't take care of myself in the beginning. Ken and Leah knew that. Ken and Leah knew there was no way I was going to be able to take care of my bills when they stole my money. They did it anyway. Miss Peach has never stole my money. Miss Peaches did snap at me a few times. Like people keep telling me stupid shit. Stupid, ignorant shit. As if it was God's gift to... <sighs> the thing is... I don't trust anyone. Nobody. The last person that I trusted was Natalie. I mean actually trusted, not forced to. I 
I, I need someone to kill me. The cops aren't going to take my report. They wouldn't take one from Aaron Cockerham either. I think the thing that sucks the most is that slandering people's names is the easiest way to get them to come forward with the shit they should have come forward with to begin with. Blaine McCrelly can kiss my ass. I need my life to be over. I can't see my loved ones and without them I can't function. We all need familiarity in our lives. A sense of safety. See that's what family is supposed to give you, a sense of safety. If people do fucked up shit to you, your family's there. My family was never there. Do I mean literally never? No. I know who my dad is. I even lived with him for a little bit. I lived with my mom for a little bit too. I didn't live with my dad for very long. He's an alcoholic and he likes to hit me. Or he was at the time. Rum and Coca-Cola. This time around, my dad didn't swing at me. He had some heart issues a few years back. They had to crack his chest open, so he quit drinking. People would have worked together like the Bollingers were. We could have fought this. The Bollingers worked real hard to slander my name. So did the police. Trying to force them to do their goddamn jobs. I mean, holy fuck. These are pretty people though, right? So they're worth more than me. I'm I'm not worth shit because I'm fucking homeless. Meanwhile, I paid my bills at Canon Leah's. I paid more than my fair share of the bills. I paid up rent months in advance. I was going to try to save up my money to get property, and all of that is in my screenshots. The police just wouldn't let it go. Natalie and Alicia and Maddie just couldn't let it go. You guys tell me I need to let it go. I fucking did let it go. I left the whole fucking state of Virginia. All to them. All to themselves. If I had my choice. I would have. Uh, sat down with Miss Natalie in the driveway. At her mom's house. And we could have, could have enjoyed a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I could have told her the things that I needed to tell her. And she could have told me the things that she'd been trying to tell me since I got there. So...
If I'd have killed myself at Starbucks the day Natalie came and talked to me. If I'd have If I'd have taken those pills instead, <laughs> then uh, would Natalie have killed herself over it? If I had been able to get to Virginia on time, like we'd planned, would Natalie have gotten into that car accident? If I'd have just taken the abuse, would Natalie still be alive? She got her family, though. They're... They're shittier than my family. Not all of them. Just most of them. And I gotta tell you, that's pretty tough to beat. My family are a bunch of pieces of shit. My dad... Don't get me wrong. I care about the dude, because I'm stupid. But he didn't understand... He didn't try to understand, he was too busy judging. People don't like it when I judge them back, they hate it. I have to try to sleep. I'm supposed to be meeting a preacher today at 8 o'clock. I was told he carries a firearm with him because he goes and Talks to a lot of homeless camps. I used to do that without a gun. When I stood in front of Danny Dragon and that skateboarder, you know, I... I didn't have a gun, but I knew Danny wasn't going to stab me. He wanted to stab the dude behind me, so I made sure he couldn't. So, even though my entire life was destroyed, people like DJ get to move on with their lives because it didn't affect them. Me not being a part of their lives doesn't affect them. I don't want to care about DJ. I don't want to care about Natalie. I don't want to care about Alicia. I don't want to care about Desiree. I don't want to give a shit about Rabbit or Mobley or Christine. I don't rem I don't want to remember any of these people. I don't I don't want to remember the pain. Most people can't hurt me, but the people that I love, they can hurt me more than you guys are ever fucking capable of physically. <laughs> 